Well, today is one of our favorite days of the year. It's peach canning day. But the problem with peach canning is it gets our kitchen crazy hot. So I brought out my Zero Breeze Mark II. This is a portable air conditioner to help cool off the kitchen and blow cold air directly at us. But I wanted to bring you along with me, show you how well this works, and then hopefully we'll get into some other testing. So stick around for this video of the Zero Breeze Mark II. You can see we've got uh, some peaches prepped here. My wife's already bottled quite a few of them. You can see we've got the whole operation going on and this in particular is what's putting off a ton of heat here into the kitchen. Now we thought about just doing this outside either in the garage or just outside in the driveway on our Camp Chef which is like a portable oven and stove top, which is great. But this is easier and we got the little air conditioner, so we just went for it. Now, there's a few different things about the Mark II. This is their second generation. So I added this front piece. That way I could make this directional as far as which direction the cold air is blowing rather than just all over the place. What I dislike about this is it's not easy to take on and off. So if I wanted to take this off, either just to make it more compact, I have to unscrew two bolts that are on either side of this in order to get it off. And then back here, we've got the vent. This is the intake. And I just got it here on the window. It's not all sealed off properly, but I just wanted to get the air intake coming into here. And then we've got the exhaust here. And it does blow out some pretty decently warm air. It's not hot by any means, uh, but it's just warm, definitely warm. Then up front here, there is an air filter. To me, it looks like a radiator, just because it's got metal fins here. But in the book, it says air filter. I don't know how you'd ever clean or replace that, though. So that's kind of a concern. The sides look like they pop off, but they don't. It's just design. It's actually just painted on here, so you can ignore that. And now the microphone is right next to it, so this is as loud as it gets, really. And here's the controls, so they have a little light here. Uh, but you can't see that because of this cover. They have a sleep mode, and then this is the con air conditioning mode, this is the turbo mode, and then just the fan mode. You got your power, and then you get your speed adjustment here. Uh, it does come with a remote if you don't want to use the top up here, but the coolest feature, I think, is this battery. It's about 840 watt hours. And we actually ran this system on the turbo setting for about two hours before I switched it over. And we started with three bars. So it definitely runs quite a while. It's down to one light or one bar left. But right now I've got it plugged into the wall. The other cool thing is you do have a 12 volt, five amp DC port here, and then a 45 watt USB-C, and then two normal USB-A's that you can be charging stuff directly from the battery. But I like the idea that I can run this for about eight hours without having to worry about having a power source. So basically, all the water that uh, wants to drip out, I've just got in this hose and it's going into this jar. And then we can actually take this water and put it into our Berkey and filter it. You can see it doesn't really get that much water, but uh, you definitely don't want to be running this with the air conditioner going without having something to either collect the water or this going outside for the water to drip out. And in the instruction manual, it's said to make sure that, if anything, this thing is not tilted forward, but possibly tilted back or on a completely flat surface, so that way it has proper drainage. So this is the wall power adapter right here. It doesn't get super hot, but it definitely gets warm, so it's something to be aware of. You don't want this next to you if you're trying to stay cool. And then this is the battery power cable. So basically you just take this, plug it into the top unit, plug it into the battery, turn on the battery, and then you're powering it with the battery. I don't like these types of connectors. I mean, they work just fine. But the issue is on the back of here, this where it spins, this will actually thread on and tighten in, so that way it doesn't come disconnected, which is great. But there's such little space back here for my fingers to do that, that I don't really even do that. I just plug it in and call it good. Now we're looking down the front tube. It has a thermostat, and I've got the light turned on, so that can turn on and off. Makes a great little night light, definitely not a flashlight by any means. But I want to do some testing right now and see what difference there is between just the AC being turned on and compare that to the turbo to see if there's any difference at all. So I have this Caldwell wind gauge or wind meter, and so first thing we're going to do is I have it on a high fan setting on just the AC cooling. So we're gonna get a wind speed, and then this also does have a temperature gauge on it. So we'll see how it compares to the temperature gauge that's on the front of the display here. 
and then I'll switch it over to turbo and see if there's any difference at all. So I'm going to keep this here at the top, one so I have the same point of reference to compare against, but also I've noticed that's where the air is moving the fastest. If I put it in the middle, you see the airspeed goes down, and then even lower, it goes down even more. So I'll just leave this here for a minute, so that way we can get a good temperature reading, and then we'll find out what our average wind speed is. What I've actually done here is used my tripod that I normally use for hunting as well as filming and so on, and just put it here so it's holding it perfectly steady, and this will give us the best result. This has been going for about five minutes now, so we can see our average speed is anywhere from 14 to 13 miles an hour, call it 13 and a half but it says it's only 67 or 68 degrees right now and down inside it says it's 60 so there definitely is a big discrepancy there as far as how cold it actually is unless the difference is by the time it reaches this meter it's 67 degrees or 68 degrees whereas down there at the mouth of it it is actually 60. So now I'm going to switch this to turbo mode and see what the difference is. Turbo, vent speed all the way up see if this gets any faster or anything. Okay, this has been running for about 20 minutes. Uh, it's actually running slightly slower, an average of about half a mile per hour slower, and only about one degree cooler. So that turbo doesn't really seem to be making much of a difference. So I've stuck the wind meter all the way down inside, and I'm just gonna see if the temperature changes so that it matches what's on the screen there. It's been a couple of minutes, let's have a look. 60.4 is what it said, but down there it's saying 62. So there's still a discrepancy on between one of these, at least, of what the actual temperature is. I have noticed, however, on turbo mode, I am getting a lot more water into here. And this has been running for roughly three or four hours, so it really doesn't produce a lot of water. But on turbo, it does seem to be making more. I'm not sure if that's really true, but it seems like it. That's been some time since I've actually done the last section of this video and I've been testing this for quite a while now and it got really cold and so I had an idea because this is the air intake for the Mark II and this is the exhaust right here and then obviously we have our AC out right there. So what I've done is actually kind of reverse use this where I've got the cold air pushing outside my window. You can see I've just got a bunch of tape and stuff stuffed on the window just to make sure that the air isn't coming in. And to that point, there actually is still ice cold air seeping through the window. So that's why I have the air intake kind of pointed this way so that any cold air that's coming in from the window is somewhat getting sucked up by this. It is going through the machine. Oop, I just hit a button. And then it's gonna come out right here. And this is coming out warm. So I'm actually heating my office. This is about a 200 square foot space and it is currently at 70.3 degrees. Now, I've actually already run this test twice before filming this section, so I'm gonna do it for you again, but I got it down to 61 degrees in here, and then I let this run, and it brought it up in a few hours. So the idea behind this is you could also use it as a heater if you really had to, which it is not designed to do in any way, shape, or form, but I just thought this might be a cool other way of using it that maybe someone else hadn't thought of yet. I'm gonna put this thermometer right here in front of the exhaust, and let the exhaust hit the sensors here. Now it says 80 degrees, so I'm not gonna keep holding this here, but the point is that it's actually putting out some pretty warm air. I had this on a low fan setting on strong, or what I call turbo, their user manual calls it strong. And I put this tape stuff on here just trying to minimize some of the vibration noises, and then I realized there's just a ring on the back here of the power cord that is vibrating, so this tape really isn't necessary at all. And I have this pointed down because heat rises, so I want it to come down, kind of hit everything and then eventually go back up and it should eventually kind of cycle through the whole room and so far that's what it's been doing. So now I'm going to go ahead and turn this off, get it cold in here again, we'll get a reading of how cold it is and then I'll turn it back on, let it run for a few hours and see how warm it gets. Okay, impromptu part of this video. I, sorry, I'm a little out of breath, I just got done uh, at the gym here at home. But I've got the Mark II and it is just 66 degrees in here, not super cold. I previously did this test when it was 61, but I've taped up my window so good that it's not pushing in that much cold air anymore. But it did cool down in here. I've got the ceiling vent turned off up above, so no central heat is coming in here. And so I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on. I'm gonna put it on what they call strong mode. It's actually turbo mode, it's got a little sign of a rocket. And I'm gonna come back in a little bit and 
see how much it's warmed this room up. It's been a few hours. I just got back uh, sledding with my kids. Uh, we got a pretty good blizzard here right now. You can hear this is still running. And right now, it actually feels good in here. We're at 69.6 degrees. So it's definitely not like a big heater by any means, but it definitely works. And I think that's pretty cool. If you needed to reverse use this, it's possible. So it's actually the next morning. I'm about to actually go out on a hunting trip, but we have officially reached 75 degrees in here, which is pretty incredible. This has been running for about 24 hours and it uses, you can see here, about 164 watts in order to run. I put this kilowatt meter on about 12 hours ago. We've used just over two kilowatt hours total. Anyway, the point is, this is about a 200 square foot space and it's 75 degrees in here. So this really does work as a method of heating a small area and keeping it very comfortable. A couple other ways that I've used this Mark II portable air conditioner is in my RV. It's a 210 square foot, 27 foot total uh, travel trailer that I have. Uh, if you haven't seen my video on that, I completely run it off solar. I have 2,100 watts of solar on the roof of it. And then I run it with my Titan solar generator right here with a couple of extra batteries. And that's where this comes in handy most is because this uses only about 165 watts to run at its highest amount of power. And when running nonstop, that means it's going to run at about 165 watt hours per hour. And it has this battery on here that allows it to run for about four to eight hours, depending on the setting you have it on. If you're in a hot climate in an RV, this isn't going to be enough to cool down your RV. It is really designed for direct cooling. The other way that I use it in my RV or just even here in the house is I'll actually take this front nozzle and put this underneath the covers of our bed. And I like to put it on top of the top sheet and below the blanket. That way it's not directly blowing straight on us. Now in my experience, that actually gets it a little too cold. I have to have it on the lowest setting. But say you're in a hot climate and you need to cool off, this is gonna be a really, really easy way to get that done using it in your bed like that or in a really small area. The biggest trick is really figuring out where to put your intake and exhaust. For me, I obviously put the intake wherever the warmest air is. That way I'm getting rid of that warmest air in the area. And then I got to exhaust this through a window or a hole or wherever. Once that's figured out, it's pretty easy from there. I don't know that I really like the front setup with this uh, tube here because it has to be screwed in. I do like the concept on the back of here. It's got these little hooks that are very simple to click on, but I don't know why they didn't do that here on the front. I think that would make a big difference with being able to change this front piece without having to get a tiny screwdriver out to adjust this. But one of the coolest features is being able to take the battery and charge it and, and use this remotely. That is really a unique feature that no one else has. I've never seen that with anything else. Zero Breeze has really filled a hole in the market for portable AC, and that's what I really like about it. Now, the other design flaw that I think that this has is the battery option. If you notice here on the back, this is where the battery trap door is. This is how you can connect right here to the main unit. The problem is that it just comes with this jumper cable to go from the battery to here. And so the problem becomes if I want to be charging the battery while running this system, the wall charger will run one of these. I can either directly plug into the unit and run it off of a wall charger. And that's what I do when I have my Titan and I'm running this. But then while that's going on, I'm not charging the battery. I think they did that because they didn't want open battery contacts on the top of this battery because that could be slightly dangerous. So I get that and why they're using this jumper, but it would be nice if they had some way to be able to charge the battery and run the unit at the same time without having to have two wall chargers. Now overall, I do like this system. I do give it a thumbs up. It is something I would recommend. I think it works well for at least 200 square feet. 250 square feet is really maxing it out. Anything smaller than that, it's gonna work really well. And you need to make sure you're not having your expectations too high for this. This is meant to be a portable system, even be used at an outdoor location to just blow cold air directly onto you or onto other people. Really the two things you need to fix is the ability to take this off very easily, just like they have on the back here, and then as well be able to charge the battery while running the unit. That would be great because if I'm running this off of my Titan during the day, 
well, my Titan's going to be getting tons of solar power because it's got 2000 watts of solar input. It's the largest amount of solar input out of any solar generator. So at that point, I'm not really going to be worried about running this all day long because I'm making so much power and I'm making so much power that I could put that into the battery. So that way, when it's night and I don't want to be using a lot of power, this will have its own power source from the battery and not be draining off the Titan anymore. So during the day, I really want to maximize charging this up while still running this and then at night running it off the battery. I hope you found this helpful. I, it has been a great unit for me. I've had it for months now, testing it in a lot of different ways, and it does a good job. So make sure you're prepared. This is a really good way to avoid getting overly too hot as well as overly too cold. That was one cool way to use this system is heating and cooling. It's basically like a portable mini split. If you found it helpful, don't forget to leave a thumbs up. That helps the algorithm. And of course, if you're interested in more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe. Until next time, be prepared, and I'll see you in the next video.